If you love this content, if you want more of it, if you want to see me interviewing some really great people in person, then make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And also there's going to be a link right down here. Started a Kickstarter for this new season so we can make sure that we're bringing you the best content. So go do that right now and let's get started with the show. Hey everybody, it's Joseph Shepard and it is Exposed. And I am very, very excited today because we have a very special guest. But before we introduce this special guest, I just want to take the moment to say that here is a safe space. I do not want to have any bullying of any type whatsoever in the comments down below. Let's keep this space safe because at the end of the day, the LGBTQIA plus community already has so much hate against us. So let's not contribute to that in any shape, form or way. Let's hear a story. Let's have some fun. Let's have some laughs and let's get into it because it's time to get into Exposed with the, the one and the only James Ross, AKA King Tyra. Yeah. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so glad that we got to make this happen. That's what's up. So I do want to know from you because I just introduced you as King Tyra, mm -hmm. and there has been a change of name. Mm -hmm. So why did the change of name happen from Tyra Sanchez to King Tyra? Um, I, I think well, essentially, I'll always be Tyra Sanchez. I don't think I can get, ever get away from that. Mm -hmm. um, but when I uh, came out of retirement, I just wanted it to be something new, something fresh. Um, I didn't want to be referred to as a queen, um, I, either in drag or out of drag. I still don't like to be referred to as a queen. So that's why I kind of gave it the name King Tyra, uh, just for that little bit of masculinity there, but still saying that I'm, you know, I'm still a guy yeah. um, without saying that I'm a guy. I didn't want to be like Mr. Tyra. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that could have worked, but right. I, I mean, do like King Tyra better. Yeah. So um, can people still call you Tyra Sanchez or is that just done? Um, people can still call me Tyra Sanchez. Like I said, I'll never get away from that. Yeah. Um, that's I've I was shown on TV to millions of viewers as Tyra Sanchez, so they'll always know me as Tyra Sanchez. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's get into your story. Okay. You were born and raised in Gainesville, Florida, right? I was born in Gainesville. Okay. I was raised in Orlando, Florida, though. And yeah. what was it like with you growing up? How how was your personality? Um, my personality is pretty much the. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it's funny because my son asks me the same question. He's like, what were you like as a kid? Uh, I, my personality was no different than what it is now. Um, I was always quiet. I'm an introvert. I stuck to myself. If I didn't like you, I didn't like you. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't want to be bothered with humans. Uh, <laughs> I stayed in my room all day. Uh, small talk bothered me, gave me anxiety. Um, and yeah, I like it, literally my son asked me and I tell him, Jeremiah, I did the same thing I do now. I'm at the computer and when he's at my, when he sees me, I'm either on the computer or I'm in my room. And that's the same way I was when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, I was either on the computer or I was in my room. What is it about being an introvert? And then if you do drag and you do things like this, that's being very extroverted. Right. Uh, that is a, so I don't know why I chose the career I chose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know how to turn it on and turn it off. Uh, if you ever see me at a party, like like at Club Tari, you'll yeah. see that I'm like, yeah, I can talk with everyone and have a good time, but then I'll say, okay, guys, I'll be back. And I just step away for a minute just That's to cool smart. myself down and then then I can go back go out. Go back again. out. Mm -hmm. That's really, really smart. Yeah. Because last night I was like, your energy was was so out there. Like you were like so <laughs> extroverted. So then when you say you're introverted, I'm like, okay, okay, yeah. I can see that. I just yeah, I just gotta step away sometimes. Uh back in the day though, I used to um before in order to manage everything and dealing with everyone I just have to be wasted all the time um but I don't drink anymore so I had to just I'm, I'm I guess I'm just comfortable in my skin now mm -hmm. so it, it doesn't really bother me as much when did you um give up drinking uh, I gave up drinking I want to say 2018 2019 um 2015 I got a DUI leaving post nightclub um there was some stuff with Jeremiah and his mom, and she had left Florida without telling me. And she took him, and I was got really depressed. I went out to Pulse one night, got really, really wasted, and I ended up getting a DUI. Um, at that time, they made me wear a bracelet on my leg for three months to monitor if I was drinking. After those three months, I tried to go back to drinking, and I couldn't hold down the liquor anymore. Um, if I would perform, um, I could perform one song, and by the time I made it off stage, the liquor was coming back up. Even if it was one drink, I tried. I even tried going to just wine. Uh -huh. Wine didn't work either. 
so I don't drink. I mean, I, like if I'm at home mm -hmm. by myself, I have a glass of wine, but I don't have heart liquor anymore or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, just like a red wine or a nice white wine, but usually with dinner and stuff yeah. like that. But I, you won't ever see me like, hey, let's go to the club and get wasted because I don't, I, I just can't do it anymore. I guess I'm older now. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a little 21 year old twink anymore. So doesn't that suck though? Yeah. Like you're like. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I still pull them. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So you were talking. We were talking about Florida. You're talking about you know growing up. When did you come out? Uh, I I I have yet to come out. Um, You've yet to come out. Yeah, I haven't. I didn't come out to anyone. Um. My dad. My my real father is gay, mm -hmm. so um, but he same yeah really. Mm -hmm. well, are you guys best friends? We're we're okay. Yeah, I, well we don't talk at all. Like we haven't spoken since 2014. Um, but my mom, I I was on my I've been on my own since I was 15. Mm -hmm. So I was still dating girls at 15. Um, I didn't like actually have an actual relationship with a guy until I was like 18 or 19. Yeah. And at that point, I was on my own, so it, there was no one to come out to or no one to tell that I was gay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think my parents found out that I was gay when Drag Race aired. Um, wow. Yeah. And then they became, well, my mom, I don't think it was very supportive, but she became interested in my life once I, be, I was on TV. Um, but other than that, no, I never came out to anyone. And I, to this day, that I'm like, well, back in like 2012, uh, there was a meme. It was like, Mom, I'm gay. Accept it. I thought it was funny, so I posted it. And this is after Drag Race, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought that it, everything was fine with me being gay. But it was a whole thing with the family. Why would you post that? And you know how she feels. And I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't know that. Like, you guys are telling me something new. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it kind of, the relationship I thought that we were fixing kind of went back to the back burner. And that was it. Has it progressed anywhere since then? Uh, no, um, I don't. When I, I feel very uncomfortable when I talk to my mom, um, but that's been like that since I've been a kid. Um, I've always been afraid to hug her. I hate it when she kisses me. I hate it when she touches me. Um, when she begins to ask me questions, it starts to aggravate me. Like I just don't want to talk to her. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel bad because it's supposed to be my mom. Like you should have a relationship with your mom, but it's like in my head already, like, mm, you're the enemy and I can't trust you. That's that's tough because I, I dealt with almost the same thing with my mother, too. Like I when she figured out I was gay, it was the cutting off for three years. It was mm -hmm. the not talking to. And she's tried to maneuver her way back into the life. But it's it's difficult. Right. It is extremely At that point, hard. it's like I just don't I can't trust you. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that you can change or you'll ever love me the way you say you, that you say you do. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, taking a, a 180 now, let's let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's let's get into your drag. So when did you first perform in drag? Uh, my first time performing in drag was on November 17th of 2007. Okay. I remember that to this day because uh, I took photos uh, at, the, at the first show, of course, and I got them developed at Walgreens. It's the one people <laughs> used to go and actually take pictures and get them developed. And on the back of the, because I got an 8 by 10 of one of them, on the back of the envelope, I just kept writing Tyra Sanchez, November 17, 2007, over and over and over, like signing an autograph. And so now it's just etched in my mind mm -hmm. of that day. Um, funny thing, though, I didn't realize that was RuPaul's birthday until uh, maybe like a couple years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so your first time in drag, do you remember the song that you were performing? Oh, uh, yeah, I did Irreplaceable by Beyonce. Uh, and I had, or well, I had what I thought was the hair from the album cover of B Day. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it looked it looked okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, my first song I performed was Irreplaceable. And now you, it's like full circle because now you have Club Tyra, which is right. You it know, is, based is, off Renaissance. Based off Renaissance. Based off Beyonce. Still, um, well, I guess the, the Beyonce is the reason why I started drag, and Beyonce is the reason why I came back to drag. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you you get on to Drag Race, and let me ask you. I know you won. Mm -hmm. You had that moment of winning, and then there started to some things started to happen. Michelle started to happen. 
Michelle. Michelle. Massage. Massage. Started to really? happen. Really? Really. <laughs> but you had Merle Ginsburg. Right. And Michelle got hired season three. Uh-huh. And on her press tour, at every stop, she made sure to say that she didn't think that I deserved to win. And that's where The Raven Was Robbed was created. Mm -hmm. I never knew that. Yeah, if you go back and watch her old interviews on YouTube, every single interview, she states that if she was the judge, that I would have never won. <laughs> How does that make you feel? Um, well, for me, as someone that, that didn't know her, um, it, even if that's her opinion, mm -hmm. her being a judge on RuPaul's Drag Race, that's something that should have been kept behind closed doors. It's something she should have kept to herself. With her being a judge, her opinion carries weight, and it obviously influenced a whole generation of people. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, for me, it was it was heartbreaking to hear that. Um, I didn't know her, and then for her, for me to meet her and her to just be like nice and oh my god, hi. Mm -hmm. For me, it was like that's bullshit. Like real. you're you're completely fake. Yeah, um, but I mean, what can you do? Um, and and I noticed that. Shortly after your reign, and you said the Michelle thing, you started to get hate. You started to get um, really vol volatile and racist things said to mm -hmm. you. And I think that that was one of the first times, or the first time in the drag race community that that kind of started happening. Right. Well, I got that before I won, I should really? say. Yeah, I got that while the, while the show was still airing. Um, I got so much hate um, while the show was airing and so many people saying that you're never gonna win, like all this kind of stuff. But at that time, I knew that I had already won, so I just had to keep quiet. Um, but yeah, I got racial slurs. Uh, I was called shark teeth. Uh, my bar I used to barbecue can't, so I still get teased about that to this day. Uh, it, was just, it was just a lot. Um, death threats to my son, death mm -hmm. threats to me. And I'm, I guess I just kind of got used to it, yeah. <laughs> Did you? Did you handle it at all? Like, did you, did you? Uh, I ignored it for a few years. Uh, I don't think I, well, I didn't say a few, for five years, I ignored it. Uh, I didn't speak up about any of the hate or anything that was directed towards me until uh, a fan came to me on Twitter and was like, oh my God, I hate Tyra Sanchez or something with gun emojis. It was a, a lot of gun emojis. And I told them, I don't care, kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the opportunity for the fan base instead of attacking the person that's sending me you. the gun shoots or the guns i'm the one that gets attacked mm -hmm. and the one that shamed and told that i should die or whatever and how old were you at the time uh 2015 i i want to say 26 or 27. okay and then you won drag race when you were 21. okay so you were um, you were a fresh baby, like mm -hmm. you were fresh out of it. Mm -hmm. I had started. I started drag at, at eighteen. Uh, at nineteen, I won Drag Race at twenty one. It aired at twenty two. Yeah, and that's a lot to deal with, especially in those years. You know right. that you're you're discovering yourself. You're figuring out who you are, and you have all this hate coming against you. I can't imagine what it's like, especially because social media started becoming more and right. more and more popular. Right. So when I won Drag Race, that's when Twitter took off. Um, that's when Twitter and Facebook took off because when I left for Drag Race, we were still on MySpace because I remember Tyra had a MySpace. Um, and then when I came back from filming Drag Race is when Facebook started to get popular. When Drag Race started to air is when Twitter started to get mm -hmm. popular. And so, yeah, that's when everything started coming out. Yeah. When do you think that you had your breaking point with all of that? Um, I would have to be... Uh, DragCon 2017, mm -hmm. um, there was a panel of season two reunion, right? And they said that Raven wasn't going to be coming to the panel, that she wasn't going to be at DragCon that year. So that's fine. You know, we'll continue the pan panel, whatever. Uh, and they had everyone walk in. They had me walk in very last, and then they set me all the way at the end of the table. And then um, maybe like two or three minutes after I sat down, then comes a grand entrance for Raven. Um, and then they sit her dead center of the table. Wait, there who is, is that? I mean, she really needs no introduction, but you guys give it up for Raven. Okay. 
and then um, they have they open the floor to the questions for the audience. Mm -hmm. And these questions are usually pre-written or they're approved, pre-approved before you go to the microphone. Mm -hmm. And the question was asked if Raven believed that she was robbed. And she said yes. And the crowd went crazy. And Raven, most people claim that you were robbed of the crown for both season two and All Stars One. And she agrees that she was robbed of the crown for both seasons. <laughs> And then I'm being attacked yet again. But that go that goes back to the whole staff, the whole production, because you guys just told me she's not here. Now she's here. It feels like you guys are really like trying to set this up to make me look a certain way. Um, and then that was that had that was my breaking point. That's when everything came to me. Like I like my eyes are open and I could see it for what it was. Mm -hmm. All the things that I thought before were true. Um, the if you think about it, when I won Drag Race, right after I won Drag Race, they aired Drag U. Mm -hmm. They didn't include me in Drag U. They included Raven and Jujubee to put them back in front of the fans to make me be forgotten. Um, then they put them on All Stars to put them out again. And then they put her on Photo Fashion Review, whatever, mm -hmm. to put her out again. Anything with World of Wonder, um, anything that I've asked to do, I haven't got. Um, you don't see me featured on any of their their web series, anything like that. I don't think that World of Warner wanted me to win at all. I believe that RuPaul truly wanted me to win the show, but I don't think that World of Wonder wanted me to win. I don't think Absolute Vodka wanted me to win. I don't think that NYX Cosmetics wanted me to win. And I felt that from everyone. Really? Yeah. Uh, I was, they it basically just never worked with me on anything. Um, they would, in, the only time, I was included with World of Wonder Productions is when they had to include all the winners, and that's the only reason they included me. For the seasons? Um, for anything, yeah. even oh, for... like if it had if it had all winners there, mm -hmm. they would they had to include me because I was a winner. Yeah. Um, but other than that, you don't see me in anything, and even when they include me in those things, so like when you see the the winners reading mean comments, mm -hmm. you see everyone so many times, you only see me one time. I answered, I think maybe 20 questions. You only see me read one comment. So it's just like shadiness. And it's not just from the fans because the, the fans are being fed that. That must be extremely tough, especially not to be included after you had won. Like you said, you believe that World of Wonder and you know Absolute and Nyx were not wanting you to win. Um, why do you think that is? Uh, just from the way that they treat me, um, if you know, like I said, if I I called World of War, so after um, I won Drag Race, I had a meeting with World of Wonder. Um, they had a, a one of their writers. His name was Spencer at the time. Because Spencer came to me, he wrote me a thirteen episode season uh, of of a TV show, like a reality show, mm -hmm. about me being a gay dad, being being a gay father, and being a drag queen, and. Um, we went to pitch it to them and they said that the world wasn't ready for that. And that whole idea of that show would be to put me back in, on the camera mm -hmm. so that people can see the real me without a competition behind me. And then they won't see like, you know, like of course in the competition, claws are out, it's the competition. But if you could change their mind or change their perception of how they view me, then it would be different. Mm -hmm. They never offered me or gave me the opportunity to do that ever. Mm -hmm. They put, they gave, Raven and Juju be that opportunity instead. And did that, did all of that stuff end up leading to the the threat aspect that ended up happening? At, at for the, the, the next DragCon? Or the next okay, one? so the, yeah, it was the next, 2018 was the whole boycott DragCon thing. Um, and so just a little bit about that. So I never threatened DragCon. Mm -hmm. um, I did threaten some queens. I'm not going to say their name because I'm tired of giving them yeah. um, clout because <laughs> they speak about me so that fans speak about them and uh, I just don't want to do it anymore. But I told um, two of the queens that if I caught them that I was going to beat their ass. Um, and I mean, I still feel the same way today. If I see them anywhere, it's, it's just on site, like period. Uh, now I'm a little bit older, but more mature. I might think about it twice before I do it, but um, I did tell them if I saw them, I was going to get them. 
and uh, they went on a whole rant and got World of Wonder involved. And it was like, oh my God, she's threatening us, da 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 this. And so World of Wonder wrote me a letter and told me that I needed to write an apology. I told them I wasn't apologizing for something that I already apologized for. Mm -hmm. And why is it that you never stand up for me? Like, I'm your winner, I'm your queen, and you never stand up for me. You see that they are attacking me online daily, these same queens, but you never say anything to them. So I told them, no, I will not apologize, and no, I will not come to DragCon. That's another misconception. I was not banned from DragCon. I was given a choice to apologize or not to come. I chose not to come. So therefore, I wasn't banned. I just decided not to go. <laughs> Um, and I wasn't banned for, because this is what every blog says, I was banned for making threats to DragCon. I was banned, not at all. I was asked to apologize to Queens for threatening them, or I was asked not to show up. And I chose not to show up because I wasn't going to apologize to Queens that were attacking me. Mm -hmm. And where do you think that the whole like threatening DragCon thing, I think was perceived from a lot of people from art that you drew, right? I drew a picture. Uh, it was one large picture because that picture was my emotions after that letter of them telling me to apologize or not to come. Uh, and even that letter, I their email, I posted their email to, to Instagram and then I posted my response to their email to Instagram. And then I added that photo. Mm -hmm. That photo was weeks or days before I, I warned everyone not to go to DragCon. When I, once I posted that picture, that picture had nothing, to me, I don't think that picture in no way said, I'm gonna blow you up or I'm gonna bomb you. It literally said everything I wanted it to say in all of the, in all of the, the picket signs that the protesters had in their mm -hmm. hand. From, I mean, even in our day and age, when, we, when I see protests on TV, it's not peaceful. Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, it's flames, it's stuff being thrown, it's all of that. It's people with signs, it's buildings on fire, it's all of that. So that's all I that's all I drew. That doesn't mean that I'm going to blow you up. It's just that's what I feel that's what I feel on the inside and I'm displaying that in the in art. Mm -hmm. And then I left it alone. Uh, I posted that one day and then um, because this is all part of my 30 to 30. This was my first time uh, retiring Tyra. When I was turning 30 years old, that's when I felt that I was done with drag because I had been doing it from all of my 20s. I have no life as James because all of my memories, even when I go into my phone, mm -hmm. all of my photos are Tyra for a whole 10 years. I had no life, I had no existence. So when I was turning 30, 30 days to my birth, my 30th birthday, every day was a new Instagram like um, row, mm -hmm. I should say. So 30 rows and each row was different for 30 days. And um, that's when the drag con, I think drag con was like day 18. Okay. And then boycott drag con was day 19. And I still continue after that. I had, I was done, I was over it. I, you know, whatever. And I continued on with my 30 to 30, back to like my normal schedule, what I was doing. And then, maybe two weeks later is when the drag con, cause drag con wasn't until May, I believe. So when I said, when I warned everyone, like fair warning, don't go to drag con, that wasn't fair warning, don't go to drag con, I'm gonna blow you up, go look at this picture that I drew, this is what I'm gonna do, that none of that said mm -hmm. that. I just said, don't go to drag con. And I didn't mean it as in, oh, fair warning, cause I'm gonna shoot you or, or kill you. No, fair warning, these people are racist, don't go there, don't get involved with them, I'm telling you from firsthand experience. Mm -hmm. That was my warning, that's all I did. I, I can see both sides. I could see the side of like seeing a picture and there's a blown up building and people just assuming, but I think that assuming took something to a whole nother level. For right. Me. And I feel like nobody was actually asking you questions about it. It was just assumptions. Okay, <laughs> I'm glad you said that. So if, uh, if, I don't know, if I had Queens, if I had a TV show, and I was a production company and I had queens that were my winners and my queens, I would treat them like winners and queens. Mm -hmm. That would be the first thing. But also if they post something online that I feel is inappropriate or I think is inappropriate or I think it's targeting me or my company, then I'm gonna reach out to them. I'm gonna call my queen and say, hey, what's with the post you just posted? Mm -hmm. Not World of Wonder. World of Wonder called the cops and the FBI on me instead of just saying, calling or, you know, FBI showed up to my door 
and they had a war like they showed me it was from World of Wonder. And it's like, uh, well, and I don't think that they they called them for them. They came to my house for me to change a timer on my website, and I refused to change it. That was the whole purpose of them coming there. They tried to search my premises. I told them you can't. You don't have a warrant. You gotta go. Um, you can like we can talk, but I'm not. You can't come and search inside. Like it's not happening. Um, but they were like really upset. I said, I'm I, well. I'm not gonna change my site. If I have to be a martyr for my generation, then that's what I'll be. But I'm not changing my website. I told them it's it's only there because people are being stupid and saying that I'm gonna blow some place up. Mm -hmm. So that's what the timer is for. But. Yeah, Word of Wonder called the FBI instead of reaching out directly or saying, hey, they reach out for anything else, but they couldn't reach out for that. That must have been scary. Uh, no. No? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's aggravating. Of course, I, I don't like the uh, police. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even like talking to the police uh, or saying, hey, if I see a police out in the street, I walk past them as if they don't exist. Um, and that's just from from how black men are treated by the police. So I just stay clear from them. Um, not that I hate them. I shouldn't say that because I don't hate it's a very strong word. Um, I just stay away from them. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't, for me, it wasn't scary. Uh, I know that I didn't break any laws. I know I didn't do anything wrong. Um, I think that they were trying to scare me or trying to uh, incite fear and to try to get me to change my sight. But I stood firm on my no. Has there been any contact with WoW after that, or has that just been ceased? Uh, no contact with WoW whatsoever. That's done. They yeah. gave me my money back from DragCon. They gave me my check, uh, and that was it. Oh. And then after that moment, did you retire shortly after that? That's when you retired around the same time? No. So I kept going. Um, I performed here and there um, pretty much all over still. And then uh, um, March 7, 2020, uh, I performed in London, and I felt that that was a great performance, and I felt like, okay, that's, that's a great way to end. Mm -hmm. And so when I got back to America is when I made my announcement that I was retiring. So it was probably two years after that. Yeah, because it was 2020, right, okay. right before the pandemic hit. And then you had talked, too, like last night at Club Tyra about being blackballed mm -hmm. from different um, venues and stuff. Did you start seeing, when did you start seeing that happen? Um, that happened, well, that's the whole RIP Morgan thing. Mm -hmm. Morgan uh, does that a lot. She still does it to this day. Um, don't let anything fool you. Like someone told me last night um, at Club Tyra, they were like, Morgan shouted you out on the microphone and she said, uh, she told everyone to come and see you. And for me, that's like, that's like fake, because if you really truly care about me, if you really truly wanted people to come and see me, why aren't you here to see me? Why aren't you here supporting me? So I don't, it's just like that. But Morgan, um, she called, this was DragCon 2017 with the Raven right mm -hmm. after the panel and got my booking canceled at a club at Mickey's. And um, Morgan is known for doing this to Queens here in Los Angeles. And it's all politics here. That's why I don't, I don't do very well with politics. I'm not going to kiss ass and play games. I like to be straightforward. This is what it is. It's going to be that, or we're not going to do anything. But uh, she does that a lot to a lot of queens. And then the way she continues to do it, because she has so many shows around LA, and she books so many queens, and some of those queens have their own shows, uh, what she'll do is, She'll tell them, don't book this person, because if you book this person, I'll no longer book you. And Ooh. so now it's like a network of, OK, well, we can't book this person because then we can't work at any of Morgan's shows. And it's, it's just one big thing all over again. I, I can't imagine. And then you're, you're now doing Club Tyra all around, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like getting in back into it. Right. Why did you come out of retirement? Uh, I came out of retirement one. I was tired of working my job. <laughs> I got tired of uh, the way that they were talking to their employees. Um, and then I want to say 2000, February 2022 mm -hmm. is when I was originally going to come back out of retirement. Um, I, at that, in that moment, I was tired of all of the queens I was seeing. Like I was, I would see so many, it's, I'm probably going to piss off a lot of people. So, uh, you can hate me or whatever. 
I really do not like it when I see drag queens without breasts. And for some reason, that is a new trend. I was just tired of seeing a lot of the bullshit drag. Mm -hmm. I was like, these people don't know what they're doing. I need to, but I can't, what can you say? You can't say anything. You don't even do drag anymore. So that's what prompted me to be like, okay, you got to get back in drag and show these bitches how it's really done because they don't know what the fuck they're doing out here. And then um, I, I stuck with that for a while. I, I, stuck, I kept going out to the drag shows and every time I would go out, that urge every time I'd be like, you need to do it, you need to do it. And then uh, lo and behold, July, I think it was 29th or whatever, Break My Soul came out. And she said, I just quit my job and I'm gonna find a drive. <laughs> And I, I kid you not, the very next day I went in and I'm like, I'm out of here, guys. Like, I'm not doing this no more. Like, you guys, like, do you know who the fuck I am? Like, I don't have to be here. I'm, I'm out. I'll see you guys. What were you and doing? I was working overnight at Walmart, believe it or not. Um, I had worked at, at Walmart. Um, I wasn't working there that long, though. So I don't think it really, really mattered that I had left. <laughs> yeah, but I was out of there. I wasn't going to do that anymore. So we just talked a little bit about Renaissance mm -hmm. and how you were doing Club Tyra and going all over. Mm -hmm. So I think that we should go to Club Tyra for a little bit <laughs> and we should go say hi to King Tyra. Hi, King Tyra. <laughs> How's it going? What's up? What's up? It's going good. It's going good over here. Having a good time partying, you know. How did this tour end up coming to be? What has been the inspiration behind it? Uh, Club Renaissance definitely inspired this whole tour. Um, I guess Renaissance in itself inspired my whole comeback because I quit my job the day I heard Break My Soul. <laughs> and does it feel any different than when you would perform before retirement? Uh, it feels a lot different. Before retirement, uh, I was so worried. I was, I was always a perfectionist. I was uh, a drag race winner, so I was always under scrutiny. I was always criticized. I was never had. I never had the freedom to just do whatever. Now I just don't care. Like I can fuck up. I can do good. I can do bad. It doesn't matter. It's my show. Yeah. And how how has life been on the road? Have you had any like little hiccups? The tour has been so amazing. City to city, it has been great. I did get stuck in the snow a few times. Elsa was not playing with me up in Montana. <laughs> but I made it through and I'm here. <laughs> As a huge fan of Beyonce, we do have to know what's your favorite era, what's your favorite album? I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to go with the first Dangerously in Love, that era when she was crazy, the big wigs, the wild nappy hair, like she was literally crazy in love. So um, that was my favorite Beyonce era. Now we know that the fandom has been certain types of way towards Tyra. So how are you gonna handle the fandom as King Tyra? Uh, now I'm just not gonna care. I'm at the point in my life now, like I think, I don't know, maybe if I was older when I won Drag Race, I would have had this mindset that I just don't give a fuck anymore. Uh, I guess what RuPaul says is true. If they're not paying your bills and paying the bitches, no mind. Well, thank you so much, King Tyra, for chatting with me. Is there anything else that you want to tell all your fans out there watching? Uh, to my fans, I want to tell them to keep their head up. Uh, don't let anyone stop you. You can always, if, it, if it's too much, you can always step away. You can always come back on your terms when you're ready. Well, thank you so much, King Tyra, for, you know, chit-chatting and showing off. Um, Club Tyra is currently going around the U.S. So we are going to take a break. And when we get back, we're going to have more James Ross. If you love this content, if you want more of it, if you wanna see me interviewing some really great people in person, then make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And also there's gonna be a link right down here. Started a Kickstarter for this new season so we can make sure that we're bringing you the best content. So go do that right now and let's get back to Exposed. We are back, it is Exposed. I am with the fabulous James Ross sitting here. Yes. Now, I want to get into your life now. We've talked about the drag race, we've talked about the drag, but I want to talk about you now. How are you doing? Um, I'm actually doing pretty well. Um, I'm at an age where I don't care about anything mm -hmm. beyond the things I should care about, like family and my son. <laughs> um, but I'm at an age where, where nothing bothers me. I'm not stressing about anything. I'm just happy-go-lucky. That's good. Yeah. So good positive mindset, right? Good positive mindset going into King Tyra. Mm -hmm. um, so your son, which you've talked about, mm -hmm. 
How does he feel about the whole drag? Um, I don't think he feels any. You know, no type of way. And yeah, it's it's. Mm. It's just, mm. yeah. When I when I if I ask a, a question, like that, it's like Ugh. okay, <laughs> <laughs> typical teenager, right? It, it's like mm. he he don't he hasn't said anything about it. He knows I'm on tour. Like he'll text me every like every other day. Like you know what what part of the world are you in, old man? Like <laughs> like that. So, yeah, I'm, he calls me old man. By the way, I'm only 34. I'm not that old. <laughs> so let's chat about your fashion line. Mm. I see you. I see you. Yeah. So tell me about that. How did that come to be? Uh, I see you came to be again when I quit drag. Um, it was from my 30 to 30. Um, my 30 to 30 was, oh, I, I should, we should probably back up to that. My 30 to 30, when I was quitting drag, I was, um, I was going to keep Tyra around, but I was transforming her into a cartoon. So that's why my entire 30 to 30 was animation because okay. from there forward, the entire Instagram was going to be just animated Tyra. And so when I quit drag, uh, I wanted to keep that going. So the images, the cartoon images are now transferred into the fashion. And that's how I came up with Aussie U. Um, and Aussie U uh, basically is the definition of our word because I made up the word as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> It means uh, to respect, uh, to see and respect the resilience, determination, and marvelousness contained within an, in an individual. Um, and it took me a while to come up with that as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I came up with it. Uh, I trademarked the name and I started the fashion line. And so hopefully, uh, I did release a couple collections. It, they did well, um, but I wanted to, to uh, go back. So I closed the site down mm -hmm. and I wanted to revamp it because I had so many great ideas and I was doing them, but I felt like I was, I didn't do them correctly. Uh, okay. Like for instance, my, fr the first collection I released was the Supreme art collection, which is like where you see the Raven was robbed. Mm -hmm. um, there's a picture of Tyra with the fist bump and then the lemonade. Those were all great and they were all in the same collection. But now that I s go back and I look at that collection, that was five different collections all in one that I could have split up into five separate collections. So that's what I'm doing now is revamping it and making each one their own collection and then they'll get released separately instead of all together at once. That's exciting. Yeah. What What's the inspiration behind the fashion line? Uh, it's just, uh, I, I'm not someone that cares about clothes, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Uh, I wasn't very into fashion uh, as a kid. Uh, I'm just now learning about clothes as an adult I still to this day I still don't shop for clothes I wear the same thing every day <laughs> I wear stuff I, I have don't get me wrong I have clothes in my closet or I'll go and buy an outfit when I have a purpose like for instance I bought this specifically for this interview but if I didn't have this interview I would I would have left it right there yeah uh, I literally wear my gym clothes, my gym outfit every single day or if you think about cartoons uh, Spongebob <laughs> or Doug because that's what I remember I remember Doug when I was a little kid and um, when Doug would open his closet, it was the same <laughs> outfit in the closet. And so that's what I had in my mind. Okay, that's what I'm going to do when I get older, um, which is what I actually do. <laughs> <laughs> I really do do that. I have on a neon green shirt and some gym shorts and my Adidas shoes every single day of the week. It's not the same shirt. I mean, it's the exact same shirt, but I have seven <laughs> of, the, of the same shirt. And I literally walk out the house every day like that. Hey. I don't care. It's just, I, I take a bath. I change my underwear. I change the shirt. I change the pants. I change socks. I change everything. It's just everything is the same thing. You are a living cartoon uh, Yes. Because <laughs> it's too much to, to, to worry about what I'm going to put on every day. Mm -hmm. So if I just know what I already know what I'm going to put on every day, then that's, that's out the window. So you, you have your clothing line. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that you also invent things. Is there anything I that do. you're... Uh, I am working on an invention right now. Uh, I can't tell you what it is, but I can tell you it is for hair. Uh, it is for for hair. Uh, and it will be used by lots of queens, uh, lots of hair salons. And uh, I think after I get the patent all taken care of, I'm going to try out for a Shark Tank. I'll go on Shark Tank and see if they will uh, invest in my company and my idea. That would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. 
you're kind of like your little foot back into reality television, right. but being yourself. <laughs> right. I was gonna do the same thing. I was I was thinking about um because people ask me all the time, why don't you go do um Project Runway? And I like I'm just I don't think like I I can sew. I just don't think I'm great enough for Project Runway. Um, but I think I'm good enough for making the cut, which is mm -hmm. like on um prime mm -hmm. where you don't know how you don't have to know how to sew even though i know how to sew but the goal there isn't about how well you made the garment is it's about how, how are you producing your brand yes. or like that so i thought about doing that uh i thought about doing big brother uh, i would love to be on big brother um i thought about having my own reality dating show i might have to be like on zeus network or something <laughs> but, <laughs> but they got all the, they got all the drum over there so i don't know we'll see are you are you dating uh, I'm flirting. You're flirting. I'm flirting. <laughs> I'm flirting. Um, I am. I'm so focused on um, this club Tyra, this tour, on getting my album done, on getting this fashion line completed. That um, I it's I don't have time for a guy, which is really crazy for me because if anyone knows me, they know that I'm I'm always been boy crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I think boys have been my biggest downfall. Relationships have been my biggest downfall because. When I'm sad or I'm hurting from those kind of things, it kind of affects the rest of my career. Um, and I, but I'm learning now that's that's the problem. So I stay away from them. Um, but yeah, I'm just I'm just flirting with 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 people. I'm not taking anyone <laughs> serious. And then it's very hard uh, in my position to find love or to find an equal or someone who's equally yoked as me mm -hmm. or. Some I think I'm gonna have to date someone in the industry in order for them to understand, understand. what I go through or or how it is. Um, but I mean, there are a lot of actors and stuff coming out the closet now. Maybe I'll run into one of them. Hey, so mm -hmm. if you're watching this, call me Lil Nas. <laughs> 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 no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, you you mentioned your music and right. that you're working on an album. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about that? Uh, I've been working on it for, believe it or not, since I won Drag Race. Um, there is a song that's uh, on there. I believe it's track number eight or nine. It's called No Ordinary Being. Uh, that song was written for Tyra um, back in 2010. Uh, this album, the name of the album is going to be called Deep Throat. That's the working title <laughs> right now. Uh, and it's because I have a lot of shit to say. So um, the album is going to be released on April 2nd uh, of, two, of 2024. So next year it's going to drop. Um, and it, it's 12 tracks in all, all hip hop. Um, I'm rapping. Uh, the album was originally written for Tyra back in 2017. Okay. Um, but because I wasn't doing drag anymore, I had decided to quit. I spent a couple years rewriting all the songs from a male's point of view. Um, so you'll, you'll, I mean, there are still some references. You'll be like, oh, that's not like a girl was supposed to say that. Mm -hmm. And when it, it, because it was written for Tyra. Um, but I'll still include her like in the visuals. So like, um, what's that guy's name? Stan Lee from mm -hmm. Marvel. How he appeared How he in appears every in his movies. So yeah. that's what I was gonna do with Tyra. She'll be in every single video, whether she's working the front door or she's a stripper on stage. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna make it in every video. My little sister wrote on the album. My my older sister wrote on it as well. Um, my older sister is singing on one of the um, one of the tracks. Um, and uh, there's a uh, there's a song called Flowers, Nice and Sweet, featuring RuPaul. Um, so that she's probably the only feature on the album uh of course and my sister but my sister's just like singing a hook because i needed her to do a background <laughs> for me um but other than that it's, it's just an, an all-around motivational album um the whole theme of the album is like the 70s black exploitation mm -hmm. era um so yeah i'm just excited for everyone to hear it so you said rupaul's on a feature mm -hmm. we have rupaul um <laughs> I didn't get RuPaul in the studio to record it, no. Um, <laughs> but uh, so there was this is whole that 2017 era again, um, and RuPaul had an event in West Hollywood. So I showed up and I asked her to record that video. I don't know if you ever saw it, but she's like, "You uh, show some love. Uh, this girl won this contest, honey, or whatever like that." And then she laughs. Well, just that one little line, we were able to 
get the audio from the video and put it to a beat and it's like um show some love sh -sh -sh show some love this nigga won this contest honey so it's 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 gonna be dope that sounds yeah, dope yeah <laughs> um well speaking of rue have have the bridges been burned between you guys or you um i don't I don't think there was ever a bridge, to be honest. I never got any support from anyone. Um, I, <laughs> I don't, just don't think that, I don't think that the way that people think things went or things are ever happened. Cause yeah. everyone thinks that, oh my God, the, you know, your drag race, all these people support you or so. I just don't think that they get that that never happened. Yeah. I never got that. Even in like my hometown of Orlando, um, I didn't get support from Orlando. I, I didn't get people rooting for me from Orlando. I, again, when I started drag, when I was on Drag Race, I wasn't like a well-known queen. I was a baby. I had just started drag. So I wasn't like a popular queen or I was popular within the black community, but I wasn't known everywhere in Orlando. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas the years later, you get Ginger Minge, who's from Orlando and the whole city is rooting for her and supporting her. And then you get Roxy Andrews and the same thing. But then you have the only queen from Orlando that has won and you guys don't support her and you don't even book her in her own city. So, yeah. Hmm? The fans just want to know, so you can put this to bed now. Would you ever go back for any iteration of any type of all-stars or anything? <laughs> God, you know this question. So I'm going to, before I answer the question, if you met Tina Turner... Would you ever ask her, will you please get back with Ike? Will mm -hmm. you please go back to Ike? No. Okay. If you met a 15-year-old girl, would you ever ask her, would you please go with R. Kelly? Just go with R. Kelly. No. So why do you guys keep asking me to go back to my abuser? If you wouldn't ask those people to go back to their abuser, then why is it so important for me to go back to my abuser? So no, I will never go back on drag race ever again I, I don't think they can afford me uh and i don't think they can afford it so mm -hmm. um i'll make one deal though i'll go on drag race if i can compete against rupaul herself then i'll go on drag race other than that no what do you say to people who say well you should just get over it just get over what Get over, get over all of the drama that's happened with WoW and stuff, and I'm, you should do it. Well, that's like telling Tina Turner, well, you should mm -hmm. just get over him beating your ass. Just go make a song with him. He, yeah, he beat your ass a couple times. He almost killed you too, but mm -hmm. whatever. Go, go make a song with him. I feel like that's the same thing. Yeah. So I just ignore him. Like I, I don't. I well, I block him on. <laughs> when people, if I get a message and it says, "Will you go on Drag Race or All Star?" or if I get a comment, it's like I can't. I hope to see you on All Stars winner. I block you immediately because I just don't want to see it. My my, I've already got my. So that means you went out of the way to figure out a way to write that on my page or to message me with that because I have on Facebook and on Instagram my moderation assistants. Mm -hmm. So you can't comment Tyra, you can't comment Raven, you can't comment Queen, you can't comment RuPaul, you can't comment Rue, you can't comment Winner, you can't comment Season, you can't comment Two. Like you can't say anything. If you type any of those things, the comment doesn't post, I never see it. So if you find like if you spell it differently to try to get your message out or to just collect some people will spell t two or like uh t u or queen q w instead of q u or tyra they'll put t h i like in order to get the comment to still go mm -hmm. through so if you're going out of your way to do that then i'm just going to block you because i'm not going to deal with it yeah you know you're not afraid to block people either you know i don't care of too. followers to, oh <laughs> <laughs> Followers mean nothing to me. And yeah, I blocked, uh, yeah, that one queen. I don't even know her name. Um, <laughs> Raja? Yeah, I don't even know her. Okay, so I didn't even know that she was a winner. I didn't know who she was until I blocked her. Um, I've never met her. I don't deal with her. I don't watch Drag Race. I haven't watched Drag Race since season 10. Um, so I don't know what's going on. I, don't, I, don't, I couldn't tell you any of the queens that are on there. Uh, of course, you, you hear names in passing like Jada, mm -hmm. but I don't know that Jada won. I didn't know that, like, I didn't, I didn't watch her season. I don't watch any of it. Um, so for me to read a comment that, that, I, that 
of what she said. I don't even remember what she said. I just didn't want to deal with it. And so I blocked her. And then after I blocked her, then she calls me trash. And then again, I'm being attacked by the fandom. And I'm like, well, what, who, what the, what, who did I block? And then I go and look at it and, oh, she won, what? Uh, okay, but I still ignored it. I'm not gonna unblock her, but I don't know you. You know me, you're a fan. So yes, you know me, but I don't know you. I've never met you. I don't. I didn't even know you were on Drag Race. I didn't even know you won Drag Race. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not my fault. <laughs> but I'm not unblocking her. So let me ask you, what is the biggest misconception of James Ross? Um, the biggest misconception is that I'm friendly. <laughs> 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 no, I think the biggest misconception uh, is that people uh, think that I'm just like a, a stuck up um bitch or whatever mm -hmm. and i'm really not um i am a bitch i can be a bitch at times um but i'm just focused and i'm an introvert and then don't, don't think that they know that small talk um makes me extremely nervous mm -hmm. uh, especially if i don't know you i hate it like even at the like at the grocery store when the old ladies start uh, to conversate with me like that's aggravating and i don't like it and it really makes me uncomfortable and so just like at the clubs, I can do a meet and greet. I can say hi and smile and take a picture and give you a hug. But if you stand there and hold a conversation with me, it makes me extremely uncomfortable. So I think that's the, the biggest misconception that, I, that I'm just stuck up in a bitch. <laughs> and, but that date, which is crazy because there was, uh, I think her name was Cameron Michaels. Mm -hmm. We have the same personality, but you respect her as an introvert, but you see me as a bitch and stuck up when I'm just quiet into myself. Mm -hmm. So it's and a double I, standard. Yeah, double standard. Yeah. So I would love to know from you what else is coming down this pipeline. You you have <laughs> you 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 talked about your fashion line, you're talking about your music. Do you have anything else that people should be looking out for? Um Club Tyra is coming back. They should be looking out for that. Club Tyra will be happening once a month, every month in select cities all over the United States. That's awesome. Um we are kicking off with DC on uh may 21st i believe okay. and then dc will be the third sunday of every month and then we we're gonna do charlotte los angeles san francisco seattle um and then so our west coast is seattle san francisco la uh, up north is detroit chicago columbus uh, East Coast is D.C., Charlotte, Philly, and then the bottom would be Atlanta, Dallas, and Vegas. So, yeah. That's exciting, too, that you get to, like, travel around and you're doing it. And what's your car's name again? Uh, his name is Jim Bill. Jim Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Bill. Uh, I got his name from, well, he's named after me, basically. So my name is James William Ross IV. Mm -hmm. um, that's another funny story I could tell you later. But um, James William, um, I don't know why people do this, but they do. The short name for James is Jim, and the mm -hmm. short name for William is Bill. So <laughs> I got Jim Bill, and that's what I came up um, with it, which is kind of also triggered a whole new personality. Um, so like when people, you can call me James, you can call me uh, JR, you can call me Junior. You can call me Jim now. You can call me Jim Bill because I, I named it for the car, but it took its own persona in me. <laughs> and when I'm behind the wheel of Jim Bill, I feel that, you know, that muscle that, yeah. so I'm, that persona now is, 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 when I think about it, I think about, I picture myself with a cowboy hat on or something, um, I'm a gun on my hip, you know, I'm ready for, for the war. Like you like the, um, Who's the people that uh, they used to rob stage coaches back in the day? Those people. I, <laughs> that's what I feel like uh, when I call when I when I say Jim Bill. Yeah. No, thank you so much for thank being you. here and sitting down and chatting. I really have enjoyed this. I'm glad that you got to get your story out yeah. and we get to chat this up and we got to see um, King Tyra as yes. well. Yes. Um, so as we close all of this out, my last question to you is. What would you like to say to all the fans and the people out there who are watching this video? I guess I can say you can continue to hold uh, my past against me, or you can forgive, forget, and let go, and we can start new, or you can just stay out of my way because these motherfuckers ain't stopping me.
Oh, I love yeah. it. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for you. being Thank here. Um, I'm Joseph Shepard. This has been Exposed with the fabulous James Ross, AKA King Tyra. Go see Club Tyra. Um, she's performing all over the US. It's going to be wonderful. I saw it last night and let me just tell you, it is a show and the energy is brought. The energy <laughs> is brought 100%. Um, make sure to like, subscribe, and all of that good stuff. And comment your favorite part down below. Let us know what you like. And go show go show James Ross some love. Go do that. Because we're all about love here. No hate. Until next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>